should cigars be aged? I mean, I think it just depends on who you ask. Some cigars need to be aged. Yeah. So some cigars right off the bat, yeah, they need to be aged for sure. Some are already aged, right? Some are already aged. Some, I think it's more of just an experiment to see what happens. You're listening to Box Press, where we are passionate about cigars and how to care for them. Welcome to another episode of Box Press. I'm your host, Rob. I got Brian Andrews here from Pravada Cigar Club, and we're going to chat a little bit about cigars. Tell us what Pravada Cigar Club is so that everyone out there can understand what you do. Sure. Um, So Pravada Cigar Club is a monthly cigar box. Uh, You are not paying us for cigars. You are paying monthly dues to become a member of the club. One of the benefits of the club is you get cigars typically on a monthly basis, Um, The cigars will range anywhere from one cigar to four cigars. It just depends on the value. We promise that, you know, each month is valued at at least $30, but most are more like $40 and $50. Um, It's a forum for people who want to try something unique and different to get the best possible products that are out there. You're not going to get something generic with us. You're going to get the best of the best. It's going to be aged. There's going to be a story behind how we found each box. Um, you know, so it's a, it's a culture and a community of cigar smokers that are a little bit past the, you know, beginning stages or they are at the beginning stages, but they want the best of the best. You know, this is someone who, you know, jumps into an M3 front, you know, and that never drives the Bonneville, you know, the cigars aren't harsh or anything like that. It's just the fact that like, it's probably stuff that connoisseurs know more like, Oh wow, this is 11 year age Romeo Juliet. But the guy who's new can actually use this to kind of be like, you're my friend who's been aging cigars and now you pass that along your to me. Your cigar and if, older brother. Yeah, you're, you're my cigar older brother. That's great. Or younger brother that knows a lot about cigars. <laughs> and that's a little bit different than other monthly box subscriptions. Mo- yeah. Most o- other monthly box subscriptions are giving out cigars that are probably what you can buy in brick and mortar mm-hmm. and, you know, just give you a, basically a tasting wheel of like maybe what you might like, whereas yours is rare, maybe aged cigars, oh, for sure. something that, you know, you probably can't find anymore because of its age, or maybe it's was released and it's no longer released, but you got a bundle of them. Absolutely. So that to me, the value there. Um, awesome. I think the club really serves a huge purpose for people that aren't in Florida or Pennsylvania, where they get like the best deals on cigars and the, and right. the most exclusive, you know, stuff before everyone else. It's like really good for people in the middle of the country and in California or New York and high state taxes, um, where they're getting like, exactly. a, you know, a, an incredible deal. You right. Know? So we used to be here ninety percent wholesale tax. We got it pushed down to fifty cent cap, but that doesn't always last forever, and we hope to God it does, but. At the end of the day, we could be pushed back, you know, in four years to another high high tax state. So it's tough on small businesses here, but getting a monthly mailer like that is kind of a nice treat. Well, we appreciate that. And the one thing I want to say is uh, you guys are doing 12 months of unboxing. Um, and I please, members, leave comments. I want people to understand that Rob and Bovida are not getting anything special here. These are the cigars that are going out in monthly boxes. Now, there are a bunch of you that when you sign up, you have certain taste profiles, and I try to do my best to customize your box. So you may not get the exact thing that Rob's getting, but testify in the comments to show that, you know, these are the same because um, I think a lot of people are in disbelief. A lot of people join immediately like, they see you unbox and they're like, oh, wow, you know, right. I can get a, an 11 year old age Romeo or I can get a Las Calaveras. I mean, we we, we did. We ran through three boxes of 2016, I believe, in Las Calaveras. Yeah, th- 2016. And people went nuts. I mean, you can't find this stuff anymore. Right. Um, and we've just been able to do a really good job of buying enough cigars that we can save things, you know, from the past. Right. Cool. Yeah, I like it. So you can check out more of those unboxings over at our YouTube channel. Facebook page and social media. So, Brian. Yeah. How did you get your start in cigars? Uh, I got my start in cigars because I moved to a place called Tampa, Florida, Ooh. which is dubbed Cigar City. Hot um, bed. What's that? That's a hotbed. Yeah, it is. I mean, you can smoke in Tampa. You you can smoke at a restaurant. You can you can have like an upscale four or five star meal, and you know 
a cigar is, is becomes a part of that. No There's problem. a humidor there. It's on the menu. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty awesome. Up here, if you smoke, uh, even on a patio, you'll get people right. turning their nose at you, and right. it's like, ah, oh, man. Well, that's why they started the uh, the Grand Havana Room, which is like, you know, the private club in New York and, um, and Beverly Hills is because, uh, like, Stallone and Schwarzenegger and these guys were out on, like, a patio in New York City yeah. smoking cigars. And some other, you know, woman that was there, like, made such a big stink out of it that they were actually embarrassed. Right. Which yeah. I can't imagine Schwarzenegger being embarrassed, but... Uh, <laughs> you gotta think both those guys going, right. it was like, you got a problem with right. this? <laughs> so, <laughs> like, no, uh, sir, no, I don't. So the guy got the idea, I think his name was Bud something or other, he got the idea to, uh, to start a private club. Nice. Uh, and, uh, and, yeah, now it's, like, this big exclusive thing. They have one in London, Moscow... You know, so being here, you've already gone to two private clubs while you've been here. Two, so not isn't that one, but kind of fun. Two private it's clubs. Kind of fun. We do have a nice scene up here in Minneapolis. In under twenty four hours, two it's private been great. clubs. Private club is nice too, as like a getaway. You know, like I love going into shops and retail locations, but it's always nice to just be able to kind of turn yourself off, go into a private club, just relax, and enjoy the conversation. exclusivity of it. Yeah, and the protection. I think you feel safer in a private situation because you know people have been um i don't know background check but you know people know right. each other yeah, right? yeah yeah everyone kind of comes from a similar platform sure and right. you're not gonna get some uh yeah. you know new jersey yahoo and no i don't know <laughs> i don't know i don't know you're and, not an unwanted you're not gonna get brian andrews right, in the club <laughs> right exactly you're not gonna get a guy like me <laughs> come in there and embarrass you about your cigars and stuff you know what are you smoking Ooh. Right. <laughs> okay ah, i wouldn't guy. smoke that <laughs> right. <laughs> What's your preference on cigars? What do you like? What are you reaching for right now? Um, I don't want to favor any cigar too much just because I think, you know, not I think my palate's changing constantly. It always does, right? Yeah. Yeah. Young, new, old, I mean everything always changes. Yes. Yeah. I mean there are times like cuz you know, I mean a lot of people dub me like, you know, an aging specialist or whatever, but like <laughs> there are times where I don't want an aged cigar for sure. Um you know, there are some times where I feel like aging is completely pointless. Yeah. Um, agreed. And then the next month I feel differently. Right. Uh, but if I had to tell you exactly right now what I'm smoking, I bought a box of uh, Padron 1926 number no. six natural. Ooh. And I just can't imagine smoking anything else ever again. But that's for now. For now. Yeah. That's a good stick. Yeah. Oh, got a little more pepper than the 64, which is great. Yeah. What did you bring today for us to smoke? We are going to be smoking cigars today, huh? I guess we should get into that. Yeah, so I'm, I'm dying to see like what's inside this long. bag. Okay, so this is something very, very special. I was, I've was i been looking at this in my, in my aging humidor, one of my aging humidors, for a long time, wondering when I was going to smoke it. And, you know, I, I barely do stuff like this, so I was like, you know what? Uh, Here we go. Yeah, this is the time. Dun, so dun, this dun. is this is a I gotta get the uh, Bovida pouches out of here. So this is a 2014 Las Calaveras. Uh, so this was a limited edition cigar. This is the scar the cigar in my opinion that put Crown Heads on the map. Really? This is the big one. Now, they recently, they, they had so much success with this cigar, and this cigar was so sought after. I bought this in Tampa, actually, at Tampa Humidor. Shout out to them. Uh, they were an integral part of my cigar journey. Um, so this is from 2014. It's aged four years already, okay? And this is probably one of the most sought after cigars, in my opinion, in the last five years. Nice. You, these flew off the shelf and you could not get any more. And they've, and in my opinion, uh, you know, the, the Las Calaveras line has not been the same since. This was so successful, in fact, that Thank they you. released a cigar based on this blend and people got very, very upset about it. And what? I don't think they pushed it very, very far. Why were they upset about it? I guess people felt like it took away from the fact that it was a limited edition. It's not a limited edition if you're going to turn it into a production cigar that was like the sentiment. And I mean, like, I would read comments like that were just, and I didn't understand it either because I thought this was one of the best cigars I've ever smoked. Uh, yeah, you want to get more, right? Yeah. I would love that. When I smoked the, the production cigar, it was not the same cigar. Yeah, it never is. Right. It never, it never not, is. It was not the same cigar. So uh, let's uh, go ahead and... By the way, a lot of people are always asking me about cutting cigars. 
in my opinion, and I think you've gone over this on your podcast, like you shouldn't be chop blocking, you know, it shouldn't be a flat edge. I feel like you should just get the skull cap off, right? It should yeah, almost yeah. look like if you're if you're just glancing at the cigar that's not even cut. Right? Exactly. Unless, Side profile still intact. Unless you you know uh, cold draw it and it's and it's too tight, then you can take a little more off just to see right. if that's going to help with your resistance issue or whatever. Yeah, you're just trying to knock off that cap so that you can get to the actual filler tobacco. I mean, mm. I wish I could share one with everyone here, but I only had two left, so. And, and that's the whole part of uh, Pravada Cigar Club is sharing these, you know, these gems. Yeah. These, I'm not going to send you the, the stuff that, you know, is in your local shop. Or, or if it is in your local shop, mine's aged three or four years or five years or 11 right. years in <laughs> some cases, right? Yeah. Um, you know, so, so that's the whole thing with us is that I wanted to share this kind of stuff with people because people want that stuff. It's a special experience. And especially if you're only going to get two or three cigars a month, in you know you're not going to be able to buy these things in your local uh b m so like why not make it a special experience every time yeah i mean i also look at that as who's got time and patience to sometimes sit on something i really have a hard time with that so when i do kind of like you bringing these in i like to share it with somebody else who's going to appreciate it because i know that i'm going to appreciate it already i've already put in the hard work to do it right but at the end of the day to me, cigars are sh a social thing. Right. And I know you kind of had said last night when we were talking that you're a little bit more, you know, introverted in your s smoking experience, but you still yeah. like the aspect of sharing good cigars, having a good conversation with somebody. I mean, I think that's hand in hand with what Absolutely. everyone's doing with cigar smoking. Absolutely. I think part of the, you know, the privatizing of uh, my cigar experience is I do like to have a drink when I smoke. It's very few places where I live right now that I can have a drink and a cigar in the same place. Uh, and uh, looks like you gotta join that private lounge. Yeah, three grand a year. Why not? Hey, chump I mean, change. I mean, yeah, <laughs> it's a business business expense. Sure. <laughs> so. I mean, if you can't tell, we're, we're, we don't profit off our monthly boxes. <laughs> I mean, they're loaded, you know, with with more than enough. And I feel bad for for people that are in the monthly box realm just because of that. Like, you know, I don't mean to like take food off anyone's plate, but you know, yeah, you barely one, making I, ends. Once I committed to doing a box, it was going to be, you know, the best the box could possibly be. So, but anyway, this is a definitely a special cigar. Very good. I love that smooth. It for me, it's like smooth leather, caramely kind of. That's what it reminds me of. Just something very smooth. Nothing very uh, spiking. Nothing. There's no pepper that comes out that's super bold or anything like that. I'm kind of that mild to medium, consistent smoke, um, consistent flavor. I love that. So you like aged cigars. Yeah, exactly, yeah. right? So when my palate goes through periods where, you know, I only want a Padron, which to me, you know, a lot of people say they're not full body. It's, it's, it's almost as full body as you can get. Um, you know, that's the time when, I, when I'm not reaching for the age stuff. But I love sharing it with people and getting there, you know. Right. You know, if someone gets joy out of that, that's, that's awesome. And as far as the patience thing goes, it's funny because I have zero patience in life. Like, it's like my <laughs> worst attribute. I have no patience. And so when I hear you say, like, you know, it really takes, like, regimen and patience to do this, uh, it makes me slightly proud, but I know it's completely false. If you buy enough of these things, yeah, right. you can't you forget smoke them about all, them. right? And you forget about them, and you put them in the upstairs but closet. But how many people the, are doing that? I mean, right. think about the harder and money and how much capital you have to put into actually creating a very nice kind of collection. So then it's tougher. I just have to put them at the bottom of my humidor and forget about them. Like the ones we smoked last night, the cello on that was just like ridiculous, but it's like- That was crazy. It's just, I've never happens. seen a cellophane that, it must've been something about the way you aged it. Was and it, I was there dry aging at all? Was it ever out I of the humidor? I had no idea because I bought it from a shop. Got it. And they were just kind of cleaning out their inventory and I'm like, this is my cigar. I so, love this cigar. So, like, if I had to guess when I look at a cellophane that's that dark, regardless of how many years it's been aged, I would say that there was definitely dry aging. Like, it wasn't in a humidor for a year or two of Should its, you of its life. Should you be aging cigars dry? Yes. Why? Because you pick up more of the box, the cedar from the box. Well, I guess that really depends. 
So it depends on what you're looking for, okay, number one. And number two, it depends on the box the cigar comes in. What about the challenge of losing humidity ver and, well, at least from our perspective, if you don't supply humidity, then the cigar starts to give up its own humidity source and its humidity source is the oils. And that to me is what's on the cellophane, right? Are those oils that are coming off? So then the cellophane captures it. That to me is detrimental to the aging process because then those oils can never come back. I want those oils to stay inside the cigar and kind of continue to marry and ferment and I agree. continue to, to age basically like wine. You're right. If you're talking about perfectly aging a cigar, you're right. You have to keep it humidified. If you're talking about a box of what I felt were not so great cigars, just want to see how they're going to age, you can try different things. Um, the dry aging can actually bring back some of the crispness or the pepper or the the harsher notes okay? okay and i'm not saying smoke it dry you you it has yeah. to be once it's been dry aged for x amount of time it has to go back into a humidified right. situation for at least three to six months easy yeah I easily had a, i had a personal humidor that i i i traveled across the country with a humidor in my trunk big mistake Ooh. okay yeah big mistake i didn't know Heat's at the time this is thing. no no <laughs> It, it, it dried out beyond dry. Um, and like, how about fermenting? You're, you're almost a fermenting barn. Yeah, I mean, I was driving trunk. through places like El Paso at like 110 degrees in the summer. So, and the inside of your trunk is like 220. And I had no, <laughs> and I had no clue. I thought because I had like taped the front of it open and it, it like came undone. It was just, it was a nightmare. And it took, I would say, three months of of 72, 70 to get. 70 72 to get back to you know a state where they were smokable and they probably needed a few more months still um which was cool because then it forced me to get out and like go to try uh, other stuff yeah try new stuff and and go to actual you know smoke rooms and brick and mortar places and stuff like that you know we get that question a lot you know can i bring these cigars back from basically the dead the the crypt of dryness you always can, I think. You you can always bring it back, like you said, to a humidity level that's enjoyable to smoke. It's just whether or not those flavor profiles are going to be up your alley now. Because like you said, it brings out a more harsh tone in certain regards to the, to the cigar, so you may not like that. What's the leaf? That's the most important part. What's sure. the wrapper? Because if you're talking about a Connecticut shade, there's a good chance you ruin the cigar. Right. You know, like we've all like looked in that drawer where our dad had cigars from a golf tournament three years ago and they're all older Connecticut shit, like a Macanudo. That's just <laughs> the, the wrappers flaking off of it. So I, I can I have a tough time shipping out Connecticut shade. Uh, yeah, they're delicate cigars. They're very delicate. I get complaints when we do them, but we have to do them. You have to have a diverse. I don't know how many diamond crowns I've ruined. Oh, what a Especially great cigar. with one way humidifiers. I ruined three boxes once. What a great cigar that is. Yeah, just I don't care what you're and buttery into, the whole way through. It's a luxurious cigar for if, sure. If you're new to smoking or you're celebrating a, a birthday or a wedding or something, go buy a Diamond Crown. It's a, like butter the whole way through. I mean, you'll never be off put by that cigar, in my personal opinion. I No, I agree 100%. It's a great cigar. Of course um, you agree with me because we're on this. No, I'm just no. <laughs> no. Oh, I'm no. gonna disagree. No. <laughs> right. no, I don't like that cigar. All no, right. this is good too, man. Um, yeah, I mean, this was uh, this was something very special. Uh, so, what was it about this cigar that just made you go, "Wow, I gotta get this"? You know, I don't remember at the time, but if you look at if you read Half Wheel, they did a review on it, and if you read the review, it's like, oh, "Okay, that was an amazing cigar." Um, just the flavor profile, like even on the cold draw on this, like you don't get that out of other cigars. Um, some of the flavors that I'm getting now, again, it has gotten a bit milder, which I don't know how I feel about right really? now. Yeah. I wouldn't know because Maybe I didn't smoke the original. Brand new. I didn't smoke the original a lot. I, you know, I love a more uh, married or um, aged taste anyways, because I like that smoother, more round, more... I want. I don't want to say full because it doesn't necessarily get full no, body. But it's a round palette. But it yeah. gets. It gets just more, kind of all together. I remember doing a kind of a, 
a box tasting on the L- LX2 by CAO. Okay. And they, they shared the three different types of Lajero in there. And so you could taste like one Lajero was super peppery and the other one was a little bit more uh, sugary uh-huh. kind of taste. And then the third cool. one was, you know, maybe more bitter. And then all that comes together inside that cigar and it's that, that aging process that they give it to sit and kind of marry all those flavors together and then you get this amazing experience. So from the perspective of one, blending, my gosh, that's gotta be difficult. But two, like, that kind of, to me, tells me like, aging a cigar, you know, there's probably a bell curve on it somewhere. I don't know if it's necessarily that big of a bell curve because look at, we smoked one last night that was 10 years old. This one's got four years old on it. You know, you just sent out one that's 11 years old. Dominican and Nicaraguan, you can age till whenever. I mean, the probably the oldest, Dominican I've had is 15 years. Nicaraguan, I'm willing to guess you can, you know, I've I've aged up to nine years or so, but um, I'm willing to bet you could age them 20 years and they're still going to maintain. A Cuban cigar goes through two different phases. So a Cuban cigar, if you age it past seven to 10 years, it becomes so mild that, in my opinion, I don't really want to smoke it. A newer cigar smoker that's looking for just something smooth would probably enjoy it, but I don't because I'm looking for other flavors in there. Sure. But from what I understand, and I've had a few pre-embargo cigars and stuff, after 21 or 22 years, there's a whole new process that starts. So there's new different flavors and things that, that happen. We were talking about that a little bit last yeah. night, but I forgot to mention that that last part. There was okay. a guy who was very inspiring for me or who I learned a lot from uh, on YouTube, uh, and his name was Dr. Joe. And he had a, like a podcast or blog, this is before a podcast, uh, called The Dr. Joe Show. Most of what I learned about aging comes from him. Okay. Um, I mean, he's a phenomenal reviewer, phenomenal ager, phenomenal at uh, you know uh, understanding counterfeit uh, Cuban cigars and stuff. So... It was uh, it was pretty interesting, uh, but then he just disappeared. I think that's the one hard thing for me on Cuban cigars is one you you probably do have to age them just because they're so fresh when they come off the line, and I'm a little impatient, like I said. And then two, um, kind of like you said, like you know if you age them for a certain amount, maybe this will happen or they'll kind of mellow out more, and maybe you don't want that cigar to mellow out because it's already pretty mellow, but. I agree with you. I'm kind of more in the new age world cigars. Um, Again, it's better tobacco for smoking, for sure. I think it's more complex. Like I get different flavors and man, I can't wait to go try this. Deeper, fuller flavors too. So the thing about Cubans is, um, the thing about Cubans is is all, it's Cubans are more like wine in a sense where it's all about the vintage. What year it was, who rolled it, right? So, like, I've bought boxes. Man, I don't recommend anyone new to cigars buy Cuban cigars at all under any Why? circumstance. Because, A, I've bought boxes of cigars where literally if there were 24 cigars in the box, four of them were smokable. The rest of them were, oh, were rolled. You mean from a consistency so, perspective. The construction was It's not a so strength bad. perspective because they have no. really mild Cuban cigars. And that's the other thing. I don't like when people are like, oh, Cubans are the strongest thing. Uh, no, they're not. Uh, yeah. No, no, Nicaraguan by but, cars. Yeah, from the perspective of like, if you're going to invest and you're new to cigars, um, probably not a good idea to you invest. You won't know in what Cuban. you're smoking. What do you? How do you know? Well, start with something you know pretty basic. Yeah, and get what your money's worth, right? So it's like, okay, if I'm going to invest in this box of cigars, maybe the Cuban isn't the best because it might be, you know. How many cigars did it take for you to be able to start picking out? And I know you talk about this that it's kind of like almost douchey with the. You know, I'm getting cocoa and espresso and, you know, and everyone's palate's hey, different. So you, I just want to correct that. I don't uh-huh. think it's, I don't think it's, uh, it sort of is though. I don't think it's like fake or anything like that, but it's so subjective. It's such a, you know, like, cause what you had a dessert one time way back then. And you know, you remember it being so good and so creamy. Well, okay. Now this cigar reminds me of this that, is creamy. but I didn't have that dessert. By the way though. It, it this is, is creamy. This is very creamy. So I just think it's like we can talk about general stuff about cigars for me. And and I think that's the other thing, too, is like I don't claim to be an expert by any means because mm-hmm. I can I cannot smell the the leaf and the, the filler and be like, yeah, I, I get barnyard. Like I can't come up with that stuff on my own. I, I almost have to go to half wheel and be like, OK, I get that. 
I can I can see where he's getting that flavor from or that smell or that that texture or, you know that, that that description. So if so you I had mean, to pick out flavors right now, yeah, it'd be tough. I think I'd be more Pride. on the general. Uh, all right, we're trying right now live. Good luck, Rob. Here we go. Any thoughts? It's okay to say no. It's okay, Rob. Again, it's more like a smoothness. Okay. So so let's just talk about, forget about the notes. Let's just talk about the consistency of the smoke or the feeling of the smoke. Yes. Yeah, smoke is medium. Uh-huh. It doesn't, it's not, it's not really, um, like, you know how your palate sometimes gets sticky? Yeah. Because of maybe the nicotine that's yeah, in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can kind of, your teeth touch and they kind of stick together a little bit. You are it's, getting that or you're no, not getting not. that? Okay. Which... This is very, just like very smooth. This is almost like a like a, a very airy whipped cream kind of thing. Yeah. Like a very light cream. I'm getting more, yeah, just that smooth. And then even the retrohale, there's no bitterness, no eye wateriness. So the nicotine profile must be knocked down a little bit or something. Something's knocked down so it doesn't create I'm that getting sharpness. Leathery, nutty, slightly nutty, but more leathery, like... This cigar, when it when I first smoked it, there was like some some almost fruit notes in it. It was uh, there was like there was a, a little bit of a pepper. It was still creamy. I remember it being creamy, but there was a smorgasbord of flavors coming from this. Now, and this is what happens when you age cigars: is you're getting a more round. You can't pick out each thing. Right. Nothing's dominant. Right. It's all kind of together. It all kind of rounds out like a sound or something. And then there's part of it where it's your imagination, too. Right. It reminds you of something. Yeah. Right? Like, I smoked a cigar the other day that reminded me of being at a steakhouse. From actual steak to the baked potato and sour cream and and, and a roasted red pepper. Like, <laughs> there was all this stuff coming to my mind that, you know, you can't necessarily say, oh, you're going to get a roasted red pepper and baked right. potato out of this. But that's <laughs> what was going on, you know? And that's also no, why I kind of like to smoke alone. Yeah. And actually, you know what? I think that's true, too, because when you're less distracted, you can really kind of hone in on, okay, what is my brain trying to tell me? Whereas, like, now I can't. I mean, I got cameras in my face, a microphone pointed right at me. Am I really concentrating fully on what I'm tasting? Heck No. So I sure. think all, if you're actually going to review cigars, they should be done in solitude and private with less distractions, right? Absolutely. And I want to say one other thing. I smoke mostly outside. And I'm telling you, if you smoke a cigar indoors versus smoking it outside, it's going to be two different experiences. So the, the whole, right? The whole thing about cigars is where? Yeah. Because you can have the same cigar in a million different places and it's a million different cigars. Right. When? Yep. Time of day, night, you know, that kind of right. thing. Are you alone? Yeah. Hello. <laughs> uh, and, and, Anyone in here? Anyone in here? Um, uh, you know, are you drinking alcohol? Did you just eat? Yeah. That changes a cigar. Mindset. Where you're at yeah. mentally. Yeah, I guess so. I didn't think about that, but yeah, totally. If I think back to like some of the best cigars that I remember the flavor profile on, like uh, I smoked a, a buddy of mine brought back some Cubans from you know wherever he was i think he was on a mission trip and we went to our local cigar bar in fargo and we were just fargo we had these yeah fargo wow yeah yeah that's pretty cool jc cigaros for other people that aren't you know from this part of the world that's that's cool I fargo mean, it's, you know it's, it's a, way up it's there. like folklore a little almost. bit about the movie but you know anyways he brought him back and all i was tasting is that like creamy milk chocolate and that's all I can remember, but it was one of the best cigars I've ever had. But I also think that was like the mindset too, right? Like he had hyped me up about this cigar. I brought back these cigars for you and From I to Cuba. try. Because he knows that I love cigars mm -hmm. and he wants to go, you know, he doesn't even smoke cigars that much, but it was like this experience that he wanted to have with both of us together. And then that just like heightened my level of like, this is really enjoyable. And I was kind of like firing on all cylinders. So this is what the club is about for me. Okay. Okay. I smoke mostly alone. But I want to share the experience with people. We're living in such transient times where people are moving from city to city and they're on the internet mostly, they're working mostly, they don't necessarily have time to stop into a local brick and mortar and have a cigar and create a community like that, like those herf things that your yep. uh, last thing was talking about, you know? Um, and so what I got out of cigar reviews was 
I was sharing the experience with someone else, looking for the notes that they were getting, looking for the, the, the backstory on the cigar and all that stuff. And so that's kind of why I came up with the club so that all these people could, you know, in sync, share these cigars with each other uh, through my backstory right. and kind of feel like they're part of a community without actually, you know. Well, then why aren't we, why don't you have a forum or something on there where guys can. I'm working can, on it. Com- okay. I'm working on it. Because I was going to say, like, if that's the goal. Yes. I want to hear what other people like. I would love to hear I'm what Joe it. in Connecticut yeah. is thinking about the 11 age uh, Romeo and Juliet that you, 11 year age Romeo and Juliet that you sent out. I mean, that to me is something that your club could definitely, yes, definitely. The problem work on. is, as of right now, is that all of the money goes into the actual sticks. There's right. nothing put into, you know, as little as possible put into the box. That, I mean, you see, I hand stamp each package, which to me is kind of cool in some ways. It's not, you know, a factory done thing. I'm doing it each. I am sending out each box. Right. Um, I like it. And one thing that I'm going to start doing with the actual cigars, at least in the tasting notes, is telling people where I pick the cigars up from because that's my whole thing. I mean, I love hunting these things down, and that's where we get the age. You know, some of it's not just me sitting on the cigar for 10 years. Right. You know, I haven't even been smoking that long, I don't think. Yeah, Uh, So, So, like, you know give the back backstory there's a lot of cigars that are coming up that came from a gas station in really yeah in allentown pennsylvania i went to visit my father i was driving by this it was a gas station they turned into a smoke shop oh okay okay now that makes me feel a little bit better okay at first gas station it was a gas station though no 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 no, no. it was a real cigar shop shop like this yeah it was a gas station for sure with these two these two old guys, I had stopped in there once when I was younger, and they were so intimidating. Like, it was like <laughs> I didn't know what I was looking for, and they were not helpful at all. <laughs> so I had never gone back. And um, and I saw, like, a going out of business sign. And so I went in, Wonder and why. I cleaned up. <laughs> I mean, nice. I had to ship the stuff back to me. I couldn't even take it home. Like, I had, I had boxes and boxes. They were letting stuff go for... It was, it was just stupid. Uh, it was such a jackpot. So you get... you. You're on the road. You find cigars. Where else do you find these cigars? A um, couple of auctions. The auctions aren't that great, though, because people know what they're bidding on, so you don't get great deals all right. the time. Um, so it might not be cost-effective for you. Correct. Um, we're starting to reach out to manufacturers, and that's where we might be able to free ourselves up some capital to do stuff like an online forum um, where instead of us asking for advertising dollars on our website, which most companies would do in our situation. Yep. We're just asking for contributions of cigars, which creates awareness for the, the manufacturer, right. right? The brand. Um, but I don't just want, you know, the cigar that's going to the brick and mortar. I want the stuff in the back of the warehouse that, you know, no one's gotten to because it was behind some pallet that no one could move and their forklift broke down two years ago and they still haven't gotten it fixed and you know that kind of stuff do you think that exists though or do you think they oh i know it does no i know it does we've we've already worked out some deals with people oh for sure no so it does exist oh absolutely i thought they would just be so uh eager to get stuff out the door that they'd be like hey you know we don't have anything on stock anymore we sold a lot of guys talk like that at first but then when they talk to the warehouse manager when they call down to nicaragua or dominican republic there's there's things so you get these auctions websites whoever's selling people that just don't want it anymore gas stations old old gas stations that were turned into smoke shops if they're still in the box i'll take them i don't care if they've been humidified or not yep um, and then you cure them to humidify oh, yeah, them. yeah 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 for years so what, what steps do you go through when you get like kind of a drier b- box you just i throw them in it's so so i have like Currently, I have five red coolers. Those are my aging Ooh. coolers. Those are at 72. Nice. Packets only. And I'll be honest with you, the only reason why I was why I was interested um, when you guys reached out to me was because um, I only use Boveda, and I only ever have. Um, to me, Boveda is the only one that I know exactly what I'm getting and what the cigar treatment is, you know, what's right. happening. It's a precise way to store your cigars. Right, exactly. And and and, and so that's there's you other know, ways, but it's easy, a, precise. You can throw it in a cooler like So you do. we were already using the packets. Yep. Okay. And to me, there really is no alternative. I and mean, what are you gonna use? Beads? I, I don't know what I'm how do right. I know, you know, and then I gotta put the I gotta get a, a different monitor in each one and I yeah. 
So the, the packets were, were a real simple way for us to, you know, know what's going on um, and do it professionally. So in each cooler, I'll have probably six to nine boxes in each one. And I'll have probably, I don't know if I'm doing the math right. You guys will tell me later. But I probably have about five packets in each one in the aging of 72. So I'm aging it at a higher humidity. Then I have four blue coolers, which is where they go as I'm thinking, okay, in three months from now, I'm going to start dishing these guys out. And those will get the 69 packet. And I'll usually put, you know, the same either four or five in each uh, each cooler. Because there's probably about six to nine boxes in there. Each box has 20 cigars in it. So I don't know if it's a precise math, but it works. Um, especially in a, in a closed airtight environment like that. And then I transfer them into actual bags with uh, 69 packets in the bags of about 25. So I know that they're getting the absolute humidity it needs per each cigar. Because I think it's like per 30 cigars packet, right? 25. Per 25. One per okay. 25, but that's that's the method of like how what's the total capacity of that humidor. The way I do like coolers is I do four to five 60 gram bovidas per cubic foot. So I'll take the dimensions, throw it on the internet in a cubic calculator, and it'll spit out some number like this cooler is 3.5 cubic feet. Got so it. then I just go, okay, well then I need X, Y, Z, uh, 60 grammers. So I need, you know, almost 20. Nice. 60 grammers. And then again, you can't over humidify with it. So I'm, if there's extra in there, I don't mind. Cause then that means, Hey, if something runs out or those cigars right. were super dry, um, especially with cigars that are dry, like if I were buying cigars like you were, and I didn't know if they were well kept, sure. I would probably check my inventory at once a month. Yeah. Uh, oh, and, for and sure. then on the outside once of the Boba packs, weeks. I write the date that I put them in there. Huh. Cause then I, I know like, that. Hey, Th these cigars that I put in here were really dry because these packs went in 30 days. So then I know, okay, well, I might have to feed these cigars the same amount of Bovada packs or double it, and that might last me two to four months, and then I can test that. Right. Or they might be, they might have given up a ton of moisture right away in that 30 days, and they just need a little bit more to get to that 69. Yeah. You don't know, but just having that extra right amount and no, 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 understanding totally. the time frame I, absolutely i i just wait until they start once the corners start getting a little hard then i change them out and i might mm -hmm. use them in something else for me personally like you know i'll use four bags that are almost dried right. out and just for what like five cigars that i you know i'm am and you can for do you can add you can leave those bags in there and push them to the side and you can add the new ones and those ones will eventually give up their moisture and completely be rock hard and they won't take moisture from the other ones because oh. it's the same rh I didn't so know you that. can actually get all of the life out of the pack, but you just need something to come behind it to continue giving the moisture up. Otherwise, they like really fizzle out, and then the cigars start giving off their right. moisture. And right. so you can keep them in there, and that goes for home humidors, cooler doors, wine doors, all that stuff. Very I just cool. tell people once they start to get 50% rock hard, put another pack in there. Once it's completely rock hard, take that pack you out. Use a wine door. Huh? Have you ever used a wine door? I have not, but I, I have friends either. that do. Do they like and, it? Uh, I think wine doors are a little bit tricky because the condenser will try to scrub moisture out of it, even though they say that it doesn't scrub I feel like it's conducive to mold somehow. I feel like I just really? always have a bad feeling about it. Yeah. I don't know. And then there's some that like actually do their own humidification system. I just don't like a lot of things about them from a perspective of accuracy, right? So I don't know if the hygrometer is accurate. And then the other part that I don't like is the scrubbing of the moisture when it's cooling the unit. So I don't like that aspect. So I would just unplug it. So for me, like to look at a wine door and go, well, I'm going to unplug it. I'm not going to use the humidification system in it because I don't trust it. I use Bovida. And then why invest $300 into a wine door? Now, for other people out there, it looks great. It's got a glass door. You right. know, it's, it's it a great nice. display, right? For sure. So at the end of the day, you know, I'm storing in a, a Tupperware container right. and they're storing in a wine door. I mean, it's a difference of, you know, perspective of what you want. The other thing want. about the, the, the wine doors is the, the cooling aspect. Like, how cool should a cigar be? It's supposed to be 70 70, right? Well, let's be honest, the cigar ferments in, you know, Nicaragua at 90 degrees right. most of the time. You know, like, it's like so. There's, there's, you know, and then that has to do with the relative humidity and all that stuff. Yeah. So it becomes scientific. I just keep it 
in the coolest closet that I possibly can, which is probably yeah. about, not probably, I, I, it goes anywhere from 68 to 72. Right. So somewhere in that range. I just range. tell people room temperature. Yeah. I'm not really that fussy about temperature at all. Yeah. It just, it is what it is. The Boveda pack's gonna add or remove moisture. At the end of the day, I don't want them to get too hot like you did in the car trunk, you know, like you right. don't want that. Oh. But at the end of the day, if you're just storing them in your house, why have to worry about keeping them at 66? Correct. Like to me, it just doesn't, at, I haven't seen a benefit. There might be somebody out there that has. Go ahead and chime in on the comments if you have. But for me, I just haven't. I smoke good stuff, especially when you bring it. <laughs> it's free. Yeah, there it you go. It tastes great. There you, you go. You know what always tastes great is a free cigar. Yeah, absolutely. It always tastes great. Uh, I agree. Should cigars be aged? I mean, I think it just depends on who you ask. Some cigars need to be aged. Yeah. So some cigars right off the bat, yeah, they need to be aged for sure. Some are already aged, right? Some are already aged. Some, I think it's more of just an experiment to see what happens. You know, uh, I don't always love aged cigars. It's crazy because I age cigars like, you know, for right. everyone else. I don't always love aged cigars. Uh, I think if you really love a smooth vibe to your cigar, then aged is the way to go. I think it's just special to have a cigar that was from a time in history. Right. You know? Yeah, kind of like a treat. Like, oh, right. man, they don't make this anymore. Correct. This has got some age yeah. on it, so let's see what it did. Yeah. Like, I challenge anyone. You do not have a Las Calaveras 2014 in your humidor. If you do, it's like one of one, and, you know, I would say... Do you know how many of these they produce? Uh, I think it was like 10,000 boxes or something like that in different okay. sizes. Sure. This was the biggest size. Um and if anyone has a box of these left, please contact me because I would buy it in a heartbeat. Uh, I would also say probably smoke it now. Um, I think the flavors are starting to mend together almost too much. I think from here it might just get too smooth. Sure. I did enjoy it. I, I enjoyed it more when it was new. Really? Yeah. So you preferred the new versus now in the this, I did. You preferred the new. Huh. So that's an interesting perspective because it's like personal preference or I mean what what made you want to age them just because they were limited edition now and you couldn't get them anymore so you're like I'm just going to age them or were you trying to marry those flavors together and make it more round I was buying too many buying too many yeah just forgot about them I didn't forget about them you just couldn't smoke them all sure and I was living in a place uh, at the time when I was buying a lot of the stuff where I didn't know a lot of cigar smokers and none of my friends really smoked. So I was like, they would smoke with me just to like appease, like, mm -hmm. you know, for the free liquor or whatever. <laughs> uh, but, right. but, um, you know, yeah, I just, I actually, this, now that we're kind of through the first third, this is kind of picking up a little bit more intensity. I mean, as far as like, I am getting some more spice on it. Um, it's good. I mean, I like it a little bit when it changes too. There's almost a citrusy acidic thing. Okay. in there as it gets deeper, which was a big part of the original construction. The smoke was really creamy, but there was a citrus note. Some people would say orange, some people would say grapefruit. There was a little bit of a, and not in a bad way. Right, yeah. You know, it was it was a really nice thing, and, I, and I'm getting some of that. Yeah, um, I like it. Yeah, it's changing for sure. To me, a great cigar changes two and three times. Yeah. First, second, and third, right? Right. What about smelling the, the smoke rolling off the, the aroma. foot? I, I love smelling the smoke. That's coming off the foot of the cigar. I like to do that right when I'm lighting it. When I'm lighting it, I hold it down here and I look for the, the aroma. I like to it. do it throughout. That's, hey. I love that part of it. It just, it kind of makes my mouth water. It gets me kind of amped up about smoking yeah. and, and continuing to try. And, and sometimes I feel like I can smell something better than I can taste it. So then I'm like, I'm smelling it and I'm going, oh yeah, that's kind of what I'm tasting. That cedar-esque wood. Yeah. I mean, one thing I do want to get uh, the point across on here is this should be fun. This shouldn't mm -hmm. be intimidating. If you're just getting started, don't be worried about asking, you know, stupid questions. There are no stupid questions. Right. And um, if you go to a, a shop and you're made to feel stupid, don't ever go back there again. Yeah, I mean, it's not, it's not easy to walk into a cigar store, go inside the humidor, and pick something out if you don't know what you're doing. So I always tell people, ask the local rep there that's working behind the counter and they should be honest with you. If they can point you in the right direction, they should at least be able to point you in, in a decent direction. Um, but like you said, sometimes they just, 
they don't they don't really put a lot of effort into that right um and like you said maybe they just got to find somebody that or you know jump on forums or read reviews and whatnot and see if that's best it's unfortunate that sometimes people do have that bad experience because we need more cigar smokers anyways right yeah totally so more people to enjoy and share and i think Absolutely. that's the one thing that i really like about the social aspect of cigars is i could sit down with somebody and have a great conversation about anything and the probably the common bond we have is that we're smoking a cigar and that's hard to do these days yeah other than like at a barber shop where else are you going to sit down with a right. bunch of without you a know. phone in your hand or check in you know social media or something like that. it's a throwback situation yeah for sure you gotta look somebody in the eye have a conversation enjoy the conversation get out there and test your conversation skills with a cigar in hand <laughs> <laughs> cheers to that well brian thanks for joining us here at box press i really appreciate it thanks for putting out a great monthly box subscription again if you need to check out um ProvadaCigarClub.com. You can sign up. It's twenty three ninety five. Uh, you get, you know, like he said, one to four cigars a month. Usually, there's an aged cigar in there always. Oh yeah. And more importantly, if you want to check out our unboxing reviews, go over to our YouTube page. We have them posted there. All of our social media platforms: Facebook, Instagram. We we send out teasers there. You can check out more Box Press episodes below and subscribe to our channel. Again, thank you for joining us for Box Press. Cheers.